VM cats. What is it? Or more importantly, what is it not? What is arguably the hardest part of your pre-medical journey could easily catapult you into the school of your dreams if only you approach it in a way that adequately prepares you. If only there was a person who could teach you from his experiences everything you need to know. <laughs> that person is me. Welcome. Let us begin. YouTube, 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 what's good? It's your boy, The Chalk Doc, and we are back once again. This time for me to give you everything you need to know in order to pass the beast, the monster, the monstrosity. That is the MCAT test. And by now you already know I'm about to give you quality. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you new, go ahead and lock in and subscribe. We're gonna go ahead and get into it. Now the MCAT is not an impossible test to do well alone. The problem along the way is that they give you an unlearnable amount of information with no rule book, no guide, no, no step by step, no nothing. And they expect you to go through, get a 528, get into the med school of your dreams and just figure it out. But of course we know it doesn't work like that. So videos like this are one of the most important steps. You doing your research and doing what's necessary to figure out what you need to do beforehand so that you can go into your study routine as prepared as possible. Before we dive into the tips and tricks that'll help you do well on the MCAT, let's first start off with an overview of exactly what it is. So the Medical College Admissions Test is a seven and a half hour exam. That was seven and a half hours. Have fun. And that seven and a half hour length includes your breaks. Please take the breaks. Please take the breaks. So all in all, you have four different sections. You have Chem Fizz, Bio Biochem, Cars, and then Psych Social. And each one of these sections is its own and exists independently, but there are different tactics and different techniques that you need to know in order to address each one. Don't let the labels on the MCAT fool you. I can almost guarantee you your test will be 98.6583% biochemistry. Do not take the MCAT without taking biochemistry. Pro tip number one. But it's helpful if I take these four tests and then break them down into groups based off the similarities and then give you the ways to study for each group individually. The first group is the chem Fizz section and the psych social section. Both of these are very heavy on memorization. Chem Fizz is memorization based, based off its heavy usage of formulas. So it is a passage based section, but every passage will pretty much point you in the direction of one formula or another. Your job is to memorize every single formula that you need and then recognize the keywords that'll cause you to retrieve which formula is appropriate for which time. And you'll be good on Chem Fizz. Psych Soch is memorization based because it's just mostly a vocabulary based test. If you go through and you understand the different psychological theories that they're testing and you understand the distinct things that distinguish close theories from one another because they like to do that, you'll be okay on Psych Soch too. The next family that we have, of course, based off what we have left over is the cars and bio bio cam sessions. I know, I'ma tell them, Lord, I'ma tell them. They think they know. They think they do, and it's all right. It's, uh-huh. So Bio Bio Kim and Cars are cousins because they are both very comprehension-based. Cars is just straight out comprehension. There's really no way to study for it outside of getting a lot of practice, picking up your reading speed, and making sure that you have everything that you need as far as just general reading comprehension. Cars is the most similar to like an ACT or anything like that to where you can't really prepare for it as much as you can just anticipate the questions that they will ask. Bio Bio Cam is, is comprehension based, but still, you it's comprehension based, but more so with the background information from the biochemistry and biology classes that you've had before. Bio Bio Cam is still grouped with cars for comprehension because it's not as straightforward as Kim Fizz. You can know all the background information, but still get lost in how they ask the questions. So it's still passage based, but you have to be able to comprehend from the actual passage exactly what's being asked of you at any given time. And that could be with pathways, that could be with uh, indirectly asking you about different biomedical concepts. You have to just familiarize yourself with how they ask the questions. 
So the first stage of MCAT studying is the pre-studying phase, what you are doing right now, gathering yourself and making sure that you are approaching studying in the best way possible. In the pre-study phase, you need to determine whether you like studying independently or in a group. I personally chose to be in a group and do an MCAT preparatory program that I'll leave the link to in the description because I like being around people that can motivate me on the days that I don't feel like doing nothing. A lot of days that I don't feel like doing nothing. Then you need to establish a feasible schedule. And the way that you establish a good schedule for yourself is if you have, you, you block out the amount of time that you think is feasible for you. you if you want to start off slow and pick it up, that's cool. If you want to just dive into it and do it, but it's all in how you approach your study time. So with the two families that I just gave you, we got the Kim Fizz and Psych Soch cousins, and we got the Bio Bio Kim and Cars cousins. The key to making a good schedule is to not mix the cousins together. That's nasty anyway. So make sure you take one from this category over here and one from this category over here, and it'll give you everything that you need to have a well-rounded schedule. If I was spending the day to focus on only two subjects, I would do Kim Fizz and I would do Bio Bio Kim. So I can make sure that I'm getting two of those different things together. Or I would do Kim Fizz and I would do Cars. If you have a day that you do something that's all memory based, which is generally a lot easier, and then you save all the comprehension based difficult things for another day, your study schedule is unbalanced. And you don't want to burn yourself out on those bio, bio, chem, and cars days because that will happen. And all of this applies unless you have intentional days that you want to study everything. In that case, then you would just need to spread these out as far as they can possibly be. So the next phase of MCAT studying that you'll get to is content review. You need to make sure that you build the knowledge base for all the pre-medical classes that you've ever taken so that you have something to pull on when you're actually answering the questions. So when MCAT studying, you basically have a spectrum of content review and practice. When you start, you wanna have heavy content review and little practice because you don't really have anything to practice anyway. And then as you go, those should gradually switch to the point where you're doing more practice and little to absolutely no content review. At the end of your study period, you're usually just learning from the things that you're getting wrong. So there's no need for content review after a certain point. In content review, I'm gonna give you the things that you can use that'll be very, very helpful for you. Content review is probably by far the most critical stage. This is where you actually build the knowledge base to actually go into it with. First gym, first thing is to make sure your notes are concise. You are not doing yourself any justice by going through and rewriting the book. I pretty much went with a bulleted type of list where I did an outline of each chapter and I made sure that each unit that I did at max covered a page front and back. But I wanna keep things as concise as possible because these are the notes that I wanna be able to go back to and flip through and study all the time. Also make sure you use different colored pens, highlighters, different utensils that'll make your notes pleasing to your eyes. The MCAT notes that you take during content review will become the Holy Bible. This needs to be something that you're comfortable and satisfied with looking at for multiple hours a day. So keep your eyes entertained by making notes that are aesthetically pleasing. Also, color also helps you to add a level of finesse to your studying as well. For me, I had a coloring system that I used where general information was in black, uh, vocabulary or examples to things were in blue, and I used to underline very important things or write formulas or things that I know I need to remember, remember, in red. And establishing a color system for yourself, whether you use the same colors or you do a spinoff of your own version, will help you when you get to the test. There were times that I got to the test and I couldn't necessarily remember exactly what I needed to know, but I remember what color I would have wrote something in. And it gives you another level of finesse in being able to get that answer that you need. You'll thank me later. Also, mnemonics are key. Like I said, the MCAT is a game, so it should be interesting for you. When I made my flashcards, there's no one else that should be able to read my flashcards and interpret them the way that I'm able to interpret them. So there were certain uh, concepts that reminded me of certain rap songs. I would write the lyrics that it would remind me of in red on that card. So when I got to that on the test, I recognized, okay, this goes with this. Or if I can make a sentence, there's a certain concept in psychology uh, I think it was P or J stages in psychology that I remember by making a sentence out of it, representing each letter and then making sure that I memorize what that is. When I got to my biological systems and started reading and learning about the immune system, like 
the immune system was cool to me because the way that it responds, you got one thing that comes out, comes in and scopes out the same, then something else that's coming in to squad up, and ah, it was really like boys in the hood going on in my head. Don't judge me. This might all sound juvenile, colored pencils and pop culture and all this, but you get to a certain point in MCAT studying where you realize you gotta look at this shit all day. Like, the, the slightest bit of entertainment that I can do to make this fun, if that is the word, like, I'ma take it because I know there's no choice but to do this if you wanna get where you wanna go. And then the very last phase is the practice phase. So, like I said, you begin, you begin doing more so content review and then you move gradually into letting practice predominate and then just using content review to brush up on things that you may not have covered as well in the past. Pro tip for content review and the most important thing is to make sure you are intentional in learning from the mistakes that you've made. That will direct the course of your study and going from then on out because you know exactly what you don't know. So for me personally, when I got to the phase where I was using the test bank, I would make a flash card for everything that I got wrong so I can make sure I'm using some kind of intentional measure to make sure I don't make that mistake again. Any, it's not, it's nothing wrong with not knowing as long as that time is not wasted on not knowing it over and over and over. When I got to actually reviewing tests, you'll learn that when you review tests, that should take more time than actually going through it the first time. It should take two to three days to go back and look at those tests because you wanna be intentional about the things that you got wrong. For everything that you got wrong, you need to take notes on what you got wrong, why it was wrong and why the correct answer was right, and why the other answers that weren't either wrong or right were even considered because they could possibly be the answer the next time. Those notes that you take when you review your tests should go in the back of your content review notes. That's Those are things that you add to your MCAT study Bible. And you read that thing every day. Every day. Every day. Even when you pack the days you don't feel like it every day. Read that Bible, do the flashcards. Read the Bible, do the flashcards. And the knowledge just becomes so second nature by the time you hit the test with, you're good. So just make sure you're very thorough in your mistakes because that's where the most amount of growth comes from. Extremely, extremely important tip when doing practice. Do not run from things you don't know. Please, because the MCAT is so much information, you just become so obsessed with feeling like you're making progress that you will intentionally ignore things that will expose a deficiency that you have somewhere. Don't do it. I can tell you from experience, they will show up on the test a lot. And you don't want to jeopardize your score by something that you knew you didn't perform as well in, but made an intentional effort to avoid. And then it's all over the test. Like you don't want to get to the MK day and feel like you could have, could have, would have, should have done things differently. Those are all the tips that I got for y'all. I just want to tell you that for those that are going into this, you are in the most challenging phase of pre-medicine. The hardest part about getting into medical school is this right here. It's not easy. It's not meant to be easy. If the test to determine who could cut somebody open and perform surgery was an easy test, we would all be out here messed up. So remember that it's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be challenging. The MCAT is meant to simulate the rigor of a medical school curriculum. You don't just wake up and just do well on the MCAT automatically. This is something that you have to grow in. It's something that you got to stick to. There were days that MCAT studying literally brought me to tears. These are the times you'll start feeling like, like, damn, is this even really for me? Like, what am I doing? Like, putting in all this work, my score only going up three points, but it moved. Recognize the small wins for yourself on your way to the bigger goal. If you keep putting in work, keep grinding, you will get where you want to be. I guarantee you. So make sure you just get that competitive score. I know everybody gonna go out there and y'all gonna kill it. Don't compare yourself to other people and other scores. Stay in your bag and get this money. I appreciate y'all for tuning in. As you all know, I'm always available for questions and anything else I can help you with. Drop a comment and let me know anything else you want to see. I love to hear from you all, and I'll see y'all next time.